Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Manager 2017 with Newcastle United and we are about to kick off a brand new season. Uh, you may remember last season we did finish second in the league. We missed out on the title by just four points. It all ultimately came down to a defeat to Manchester City at the City of Manchester Stadium on the Etihad. Um, we were beaten 2-1 in that game and that was the six-pointer that ultimately decided where the title was going to go. Um, I was a little bit demotivated at the end of last season because I felt like we had a great chance to actually win um, the league and we just passed up that opportunity. And so I was determined to do something about the squad that we've had for the last four years, or at least the core of the squad, that hasn't won a trophy. And so I went on a big transfer overhaul of the team. Um, Normally I would start off this episode at the beginning of pre-season and then check in at the end of pre-season, so pre-season, have two transfer updates uh, and then play the first game of the season. This time around I'm just going to go straight to that first game of the season, uh, which is actually against West Brom because I just wanted to have lots of time without worrying about recording where I could just focus on the team. Uh, look at where we need to strengthen, which players we could bring in, where we could spend money, where we could make money, um, and try and keep the balance of the squad, but also just massively overhaul it at the same time and create a much stronger and better team. Because up to now, most of the transfers I've been making have been quite costly mistakes. Players like Kostiansky, um, we paid £30 million for, and he was never really going to get in the team as long as we had Simonson, so it was a waste of money, but I couldn't afford players better than him because they costed so much more money so what I've done now is really just hit the big transfers I focused on just players who are really are on sort of Simonson level uh, good and I think that we are in a position to actually win the league this season I'd be surprised if we didn't win it this season with the team that we've got so let's go straight into the transfers and as you can see straight off the bat we've got 80 million pounds in the transfer budget and 380,000 pounds available which is a bit different to the end of last season or last episode where the board gave us just 29 million pounds and we had virtually no wage budget available uh, so quite a lot has gone on and if we click this transfer history button you will see we have spent £189 million. We've sold £166 million. It has been a big, big overhaul of the squad. Um, so let's start with who's gone out. The first one is Callum Chambers. He was one of our longest serving players. He's gone to Southampton. Um, he spent, I think, six years with us at Newcastle. Uh, a very long time. We signed him for 12 and a half. He's gone out for 18.25. That's not bad. He was a very consistent player, but he was holding back an opportunity at right back. So I thought I'd cash in on him early. Uh, Simone Favre's gone for £8.5 million. He never really got in the team. We made a big loss on him, but I wasn't worried about losses this season. I just needed cash to get transfers going. Uh, Matthew Taylor, we actually made a profit on. You might remember he didn't really do a lot. We signed him for 3.9. He never appeared in the league. All of his appearances came in cup competitions, but we've managed to double our money on him in one year, which is not bad. Cristiano Ronaldo obviously retired at the end of the season, so that cleared up our wage budget. Baba Rama, our other long-term fullback, has also been sold. We signed him for £15.5 million at the same time as Chambers, and they had six years together on the flanks. Both of them were nearly 30. I wanted to cash in on them while they were still commanding double-digit millions, uh, which I have done. So it's a shame to see them both go, but I think we've got better players in with more room to grow because they were only three-star players, and they were for a long time, and that's good for the Champions League qualification, but not good enough for the title. Now, the other one to go is Almanza. He went to Barcelona. He was another one that I just wanted to clear out the team. He was never going to be that good a player. We signed him for 20. He's gone for 23. He was never getting in the first team. Um, and I wanted to bring in some younger players who had more potential than he did. Uh, Kostiansky, I mentioned earlier, he's gone. We made a huge loss on him, but I just wanted him out of the team. I wanted some cash back. We pretty much lost half our money on him. Um, but he's an example of the kind of player that we have been signing when we maybe shouldn't be. We should be saving that money uh, and bringing in bigger names. And that's what I'm trying to do now is go for the big, big signings. Uh, now, the biggest player to go out is clearly Divock Origi. He's gone for £46 million, could become £60 million. Um, I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to sell him, but £60 million for a 29-year-old striker whose um, ability is sort of built around his pace. 
uh, was a bit too much to really reject, even if he did get 30 goals last season. Uh, he £60 million, I could sign any left winger in the world for that kind of money, which is pretty much what I went and did. Uh, we signed him for just £22 million. He came in at the same time as Chambers Mamana. You can see a theme here of players we signed six years ago when we got back into the Premier League. Um, they've been getting us into the Champions League every season, but not getting us that title so if they are getting us a title they need to go we need to bring in the new breed like Simonson who are going to get us up to that next level um, so we more than well we could triple our money on Divock Origi uh, if the transfers go our way uh, so I don't think that's a particularly bad deal especially if you brought in a good player Americ Muller another one to go I've decided Ketchel is our number one there's no point having another world class goalkeeper in the squad if we've already got one who's homegrown from the club's academy um, and is also England's number one I don't want to risk that so Muller has gone um, both Ketchell and Muller had five-star potential ability, but Muller wasn't getting in the team. It was a good chance to cash in on him. Uh, could get and will get £50 million for Muller. Um, so those are the players that went out. Um, as you can see, in terms of first-team players, it's mostly Chambers, uh, Baba Rahman, and Divock Origi, really. And it's only three first-11 players that actually went out, um, which isn't bad for a £166 million return. And I think I've signed more than three uh, first-team players who've actually come in. James Berry's a player, a goalkeeper, I think, uh, right back, sorry, that I signed a little while ago. He was just another one of those freebies. The same for Gullenbeck, who will now be our backup goalkeeper and isn't an actual backup goalkeeper. He's never going to change the world. Um, everybody else is possible first-team player. Andre Linord is the first one. He's our new left back to replace Baba Rahman. As you can see, two and a half current ability, four star potential ability. Um, he's got very good stats for a left back. He's 22 years old. He's clearly going to develop. He'll be at least a three star player as Baba Rahman was, but I think he could definitely be three and a half, four star. Um, so that will definitely be a step above on Baba Rahman. He's also just a bit fitter and faster, got less flaws. Um, he came in for just under £30 million, which is not bad. We signed Luis Sobral, who's kind of Kostiansky's replacement. He's a lot cheaper than Kostiansky was, but he's got much better stats as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's got a lot of potential ability as well. 22-year-old striker, 17 finishing is what attracted me to him. He's also a complete forward naturally, which is what I want. Um, brought him in for £14.5 million. I expect him to do good things as a backup player, especially in maybe the big matches where I might not want to play Simonson, who's got an affinity to not enjoy those big games. Um, Felipe Augusto is the next one. We brought him in as a right back to replace Callum Chambers. We brought him in from Brazil, uh, which is quite unusual because it's so difficult to sign players from Brazil, but we've managed to get him. Um, He's going to be a good right back. He'll be fighting with Mamana for that position. Uh, £21 million. He's a pretty good player. It doesn't necessarily show up in his history. Um, but I don't mind signing him for just 21 million quid. Paolo Roberto, one of the biggest signings. He's another defender. You might notice a theme here. He's coming in at centre-back. Very good natural fitness. 24 years old. Very solid in his other areas. Um, and he will slip straight into the first team alongside Mamana at the back. In all likelihood, he'll be fighting with Lucas originally. But I think he'll push past him soon. You can see his history with Benfica is pretty phenomenal. Um, and I'm expecting big things from him at just under £40 million. Um, now, one of the biggest signings uh, and more interesting signings is Lucas Imperiale, um, who I've signed from Sevilla for £35 million. He is on Simonson's level. These stats are off the charts. He is such a good player. Uh, but you might notice a slight flaw, and that's that he's an AMC, and I don't play that role. So he is going to have to retrain as a central midfielder. He currently rates as a three-star midfielder, so that's still a good addition to the team. He'll get better when he retrains, uh, and I think he can be a five-star player in centre midfield. He's only 23. He can easily retrain. But he's had a pretty phenomenal time at Sevilla. They got him for just £2.4 million from Independiente. Um, and he's just been brilliant his entire career. He's one of those regions that you see and you just immediately have to sign, which is what I went and did. Um, so I'm hoping for big things from him if he retrains as a central midfielder. Now the last signing is Divock Origi's replacement. We got £60 million for Origi, or we'll get £60 million for Origi. And I've spent £52 million on this player. You can see why. He's already four-star left winger. Will be a five-star left winger almost certainly. His stats are off the charts. He does need to retrain it 
retrain as an inside forward. He's not bad in that position, but a bit of retraining will make him ideal. Um, he's just so good on this left wing, and I think that he is easily the new Origi. He's as good as Origi was when he left. Uh, 7.54, 7.33 ratings. He even had an 8.17 for the B team. Um, and I think he's just going to set the league alight in the same way that Origi did last season. So all of these players will be fighting for this first team. It's only really Sabral who won't necessarily be in the first team straight away. Um, everybody else will just walk into that team. So three first team players going out and four, five first team players coming in is not a bad return. It's really strengthened the squad. It's got a bit of balance. We're perfectly aligned for squad registration limits and rules. Um, and I think that this is the new spine. Six years ago, we brought in a whole series of players who've been in the team ever since. Um, I've just done it again, effectively. And I think that first time out, we can go and win the title because these are much, much better players. And there is so much potential in this squad. You only have to rank it like this and you can see there's just virtually nobody on a solid three stars. Um which is just crazy, and those players will be shifted out probably next season. Uh, I want everybody to have potential ability in the five-star region. I want everybody to have current ability in the three-star region. A few two-stars who are the reserve goalkeeper and a couple of central defenders who could go on and do very well. Signed them a little while ago. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually quite excited for the new league season. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll get into that game against West Brom. We'll see how our new team gets on. And hopefully we can kick off with three points because we've got a very good start to the season, an opportunity to really rack up points quickly. Well, here is how we are lining up for the match against West Brom. You might notice that Morton Simerson is unhappy. That's because some big clubs came in with bids, which I flat out rejected. He's going absolutely nowhere right now. Uh, so he'll continue up front. We don't really have a better striker to come in at the moment. So Simerson will hopefully still bang in the goals, even if he's unhappy. Um, Paolo Roberto is going to make his debut on the left wing in place of Origi, who's left the club. Sane continues on the right wing. Kovacic is partnered with Imperiale. I want to see how he gets on in his debut. Uh, Lewis Cook will tuck in behind both of them. Then it's Lucas, Carvalho, Albini and Mamada across the back four with Ketchel in goal. A few players on the bench could make their debut, um, but a few of them are also on the international break, I think, with the Olympics. Uh, which is quite annoying. I always forget about the Olympics, uh, but it means that the squad isn't actually completely filled out yet. Um, I'm not going to bring under 23s, and I believe in this squad to do the job, and we're not going to need seven substitutes anyway. So let's get into this game and hopefully get three points. Lucas with the throw in finds Paolo Roberto. He keeps the ball in. Lucas puts it across, cleared away. Lewis Cook there. Now Imperiale, edge of the area, finds Leroy Sane, who touches it home. We're 1 0 up inside 10 minutes. Kovacic with the corner towards the near post. Thiago Carvalho's shot is blocked to Paolo Roberto. Beats his man, finds Carvalho. There's Lewis Cook and he's tucked it in the bottom corner for two. Kovacic with a corner. We're doing well from the corners today. And there's a foul in there from House. We've got the penalty. Simonson to open his account for the new season. And he does straight down the middle for three. Slavchev finds Monka. He slips the ball through for Taylor. Good save from Ketchel against our former player. Kovacic with a corner towards the far post. Sane picks it up on the edge of the area. Beats the defender. Goes past another. Imperiale to Paolo Roberto. He's hit the post and it's cleared away. Simonson's free kick. Dinked in towards the first man. Cleared away. Imperiale is the one chasing it. He finds Albini. There's Roning, slips it into Simonson, beats the defender and has beaten the goalkeeper far too easily. Lewis shouldn't be beaten there, but that's his 50th league goal for us. He's not even been with us two full years. There is the full-time whistle. It's a 4-0 victory on the opening day of the season. Exactly what we needed to kick off this campaign. Everybody getting involved. The debutants doing brilliantly. And that is three points on the league board straight off the bat. Well, that is going to be all for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think about my transfers. Take a good look at the players and their stats. Let me know if there's 
maybe a dud that I've signed, or if you think somebody's about to become the next Morton Simonson, uh, I will reassure you and say there's no way Simonson is leaving. He's going to be as unhappy as he wants. He tried to organise a coup and it failed. Um, I managed to appease the players, so he's not going anywhere. Hopefully he cheers up a bit when the transfer window closes. Uh, drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it, and if you think we're going to win the title this season, don't forget to subscribe to see how we get on as the season unfolds. But until next time, see ya.